there's a, a lot of relevance. I mean, yeah, Puerto Rico, like Trump says, an island over there surrounded by water. But everything that you saw there Hello. can happen here in the States, everywhere, to anybody. Uh, energy is energy is power in 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 many ways. Um, so uh, one one take for me is that if you are, you know, if you're dealing with the business, especially if you're a small business, you ought to be thinking about how do you prepare for a disaster? That has to be something built in. So, sure. Casa Puebla is an independent town within the country of Puerto Rico? It's, a, it's an organization. It's an, an NGO. An, an, an NGO. NGO, but they have their own power grid. They're off the grid. They, they have what you would call an, a nano grid. It's not really a micro grid. They, they, they have interconnected a source of generation uh, through photovoltaic uh, and a photovoltaic array that is is then uh, through an inverter it's it's uh, it's it's fed in to their their uses which are mostly they they run a radio station mm -hmm. they uh, run a a pretty successful coffee uh, distribution uh, uh, manufacturing distribution system It's, it's within the town of Adjuntas, and I, I see it as a, as a growing um, a organization. It's been there for very long. They, they, for many, many, it started out when uh, mining was proposed for the town, and you know, this was like, was it in the 80s, 70s? This was in the 70s. But it's, it's a perfect example, I think, if I may, of social entrepreneurial uh, or social entrepreneurship. And, uh, okay, Casa Pueblo showed its resilience in the face of this event. However, resiliency is not necessarily a good thing all the time. We need to understand that. Because behind that word, we always like the word resilience. I mean, it sounds positive in all of its complexity, but there are many resilient things out there that need to die. <laughs> well, you, you, you're taking it a different yeah. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about Casa Pueblo. The reason, the reason why Casa Pueblo has not been, even though it's a great example, has not spread as quickly as it could, and it should, is, is because it faces the barriers of its own, the mayor of the, own, the town where it's at, it's at odds with Casa Abuelo. The, the state government is at odds with Casa Abuelo. The owner of, the, 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 the director of Casa Abuelo was just fabricated a case by the police. So to, my question was, is there any possibility of policy change that would allow for So we are we are in between. I would say we are in between. The, the, as as uh, the movie showed, uh, the prepa is a monopoly. It's a it's a it generates four billion dollars, and they're in debt. They need somebody to pay. So even though um, policies come and go about increasing renewables, they, they they're coming with a cost to the to the client. They they're they're putting all uh, all the barriers that they can. There are after Maria. Maria opened the door for people to sort of hey, you're not giving me power. I, I need to get my own. So there are municipalities that are trying to form cooperatives, uh, but 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 it's not easy. It's always with a barrier, and you will never know if 
if everybody that gets out at the end would not be taxed somehow. Mm. Because the government has been very open about And when I talk about the government, it's not only federal, I mean local, it's the federal government. The fiscal board came with a directive to privatize the electricity in Puerto Rico. That's a very strange, uh, that's, a, that's a very strange law. <laughs> when you, you want to balance finances of a place and you're looking at the energy. It was the, it was the biggest, it was the biggest chunk of the debt. Y yeah. Of itself. So, and and you you can understand that as as the backbone of every other uh, single aspects of the island's economy. But you know, I wanted to go back to your the policy comment. Yeah, Maria is a policy window, perhaps for change, and it's still open. Mm -hmm. It's closing rapidly, but it, it's still open. How, however. This goes back to the governance, the governance issue. Actors in government and the development of laws and regulations that can liberate uh, the, uh, or, or, or make easier the development of prosumer behavior and, and for uh, the amount of, of uh, renewable technology now available to actually, for us to have access to that at, at the individual household level. Uh, that, in the governance structure we are in, is moving way slower than the market for renewables in the island. That market did not get to the island after Maria. We have studies that show that by the time Maria got to the island, there were already over 300 renewable energy installing uh, enterprises doing business. Some very good business, some unscrupulous business. Because just because you say renewable, it doesn't mean that it's pure and perfect. So there, we have already problems with, a, a, let's say, uh, an emerging market of renewables in the island, but a lagging policy process. Lagging because there are very resilient structures that do not come down that allow for technologies that will build the actual resilience of our communities to come up. So even within the, the same word of resilience, you have destruction and construction that has to happen at the same time. So. Yeah, uh, I, wanna, I wanna broaden more the, the context that we've been talking because I, I think that you wanna understand the entrepreneurship uh, context that people have in Puerto Rico, especially in small businesses, especially from those of low income. Uh, in Puerto Rico, not only we have a, a huge connection between the entrepreneur, entrepreneurship uh, endeavors of people with housing and other elements that are not shown on the, on the, on the movie, like water and That's like education. transportation and education. Uh, but I, I, I want to focus a little bit on housing uh, and several planning processes that are happening at the same time. Uh, in Puerto Rico, very few people make the connection between the 53% of the informal housing with the 60% of the low-income population that is under the level of poverty with uh, the 50% of the economy that happens informally also. So uh, when, when we're talking about this huge chunk of the population, we're talking about half of them or even more, uh, they don't have access to formerly an, a physical address. They don't have credit. They don't have title deeds. So they don't have any access to uh, uh, a, 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 a road to formality. So they have all these roadblocks that affects them not only on their daily lives, 
uh, socially, but also economically, uh, trying to uh, make this endeavor of a, a formal business. So, uh, speaking about the, the uh, governance issue that Cecilio just mentioned, uh, in Puerto Rico we've had uh, a, a huge history of developing a lot of plans and a lot of uh, ideas of what to make of our future. But Maria, in the eyes of the administration, has erased all of that. Uh, they, have, they have thought of Puerto Rico as a blank canvas that they can just uh, make anew. Uh, and, and that rigid structure is conveniently used in a sense that they can change also a lot of things uh, over, overnight. So we now have the fiscal plan, we have the integrated resources plan, we have the zoning reclassification. Re 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 we have the recovery plan, but the biggest one is the action plan, uh, which is deciding the allocation and distribution of over $20 billion without having responsibly allocated and identified the different needs, unmet needs, most affected areas, a damage assessment. All of these decisions are uh, been taken blindly uh, without having real data. Uh, so in the, in, in the specific case of entrepreneurships, uh, we don't have actually a, a great uh, definition of what a small business is. Uh, in Puerto Rico, small and medium business is the same category and is defined oh, uh, as a business that uh, has a profit of under a million dollars. So that's a little bit ridiculous in a sense that when we're talking about the populations that we want to uh, impact in some way, we don't have any kind of a statistics, even though we know uh, that they face a lot of hardships uh, in, a, in a way that other businesses don't. And uh, regarding that specifically after the hurricane, uh, much of the decision making and much of the policy that has been, been, has been, been developing, not as laws, but as plans. Uh, has been to favor again, uh, as you see in, in the video, the, the, economic, uh, the economic development strategies are not actually economic development, it's just the introduction of ex external capital uh, and giving opportunities to in, uh, external investors. Artificial growth. Mm -hmm. So now we have the introduction of opportunity zones, Act 20 and 22. Uh, the, 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 the actual contracting of the CBD DR funds has been mostly like 90, I think it's 92% uh, from the US companies. So uh, it's a formula that has been repeating itself again and again on uh, not giving incentives and not putting uh, availability of the funds towards the what should be the unmet needs, but it's not uh, public data. So uh, there's a huge responsibility on uh, uh, advocates and anyone that is interested on in, in helping Puerto Rico to f speak truth to power to the agencies that have, been, that have the data, but have not been responsible enough to make it available for people. I wanna say something. Uh to, to, to uh, tap into what you said the, uh, and what I said earlier. You know, these climate disasters are seen as an opportunity uh, because money comes in, you know, either because some groups want to help or the, in our case, a federal government or, or the local government itself is able to reallocate under an emergency um, a, a climate funds but a lot of the funds came to Puerto Rico and left. That, that is no way to create local economic development in a situation where local uh, economy, the local economy of Puerto Rico was already bad. Uh, there is data that came out from the Center of the New Economy. They took this data from USA, the USA Spending uh, website. At the time of the hurricane, Puerto Rico had about over 3,000 companies that were listed under SAM and about a little bit over 1,000 that 
could take care or deal with disaster issues. Of those, so that's you know, 34% of the companies listed for, for Puerto Rico, Puerto Rican companies, could deal with disasters. Of those, only uh, 216, 214 were called to, to deal with an issue uh, of the disaster. This is, this is with the federal government. We don't know anything. There's no data about, this is FEMA, Army Corps of Engineers, the ones that make decisions for big projects. But for the money that came into the government itself, we don't know exactly where it goes, but we can guess that you know there, there's a lot of contracting from people uh, from outside. And there's no problem with that if there's merit, but if we want to, you know, if one of the things that we want to do is to improve local economy, local should go first. In fact, that's presumably FEMA's motto, local first, but that's not how, um, that's not how it uh, turned out. One thing that I found with small businesses, just think about this disaster. Businesses depend on energy. If you're a food business, where you need to have refrigerated food, it's it just even worse. Uh, I found, and I don't know if um, the uh, the technician over there, if he can put the, there is one particular slide, I don't wanna put them all, so if you can go to one uh, where there's a couple, um, uh, go over, 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 let's see if I can find it. No, I think, there. So these are, I found this last, last month. They used to be my students. Uh, they graduated from the University of Puerto Rico. Uh, she's a biologist, he's an environmental scientist. Uh, she ended up having a master's in public health. She also has a certificate in, um, uh, as a midwife. At the time of the hurricane, he um, was doing his master's. They had created over the years a, um, a business doing local yogurts, organic, local products, no preservatives. Uh, the, the, bit, the business itself was five years old when the hurricane hit. It took them a while to get the permit, and that's a problem for small businesses. Not if you're Walmart, but if you're a small business, it takes a while to, to be able to operate. They were, they were doing fine. Then the hurricane came, and nobody, no small business is prepared for the lack of electricity that we experienced in Puerto Rico. Uh, uh, it, was, it was very expensive to maintain uh, things refrigerated, but then there was the lack of food. There was no milk. The agriculture, local agriculture, took a hit. And for a while, we didn't have a lot of variety of foods. It was... It was, it was uh, at least in the short term, it was doomed to fail. They were insured. You know, they're counting the, put that there because they, they recounted their story. We were insured. It's not like we were irresponsible. We met all the criteria that we had to meet. We worked really hard. We had the passion, but the insurance didn't cover everything. Unless your business is completely destroyed by the wind, you weren't covered. Their business interruption was not prepared to cover months and months and months of. So, you know, it just, it just didn't happen. They, it took them a while to find employment, but they did. They have professional degrees. But now, you know, that dream of having, uh, a dream of entrepreneurship, you know, dream of having the control of my, uh, what I do, it, it was it was completely uh, lost. That doesn't mean that they might not be happy. It's just that you know their pathways were much different than they would have wanted, and and it had nothing to do with with their um, their education. It's just it's just the situations. Yes. He had a question. Uh -huh. We actually we had. Well, we have a couple of questions, but okay. it's lunchtime. Um, are you all okay being up here for people to come to you for questions? Yes, yes. Okay, so can we all give them a round of applause?